Hello, my name's Stephen Knight. Welcome to the next instalment in my series on creating lists in SharePoint 2010. And this particular uh, module in the series is about creating views to go with our custom list. So our objective with custom views is to show just the columns that we need with the data being sorted and filtered in just the way we need. So what we're going to start with is making a view that just shows a selected subset of the fields and uh, for a particular salesperson. Now in the second view that we create, we'll look at adding some grouping and some subtotals to that as well. So let's make our first view here showing uh, product sales for a particular salesperson sorted in a particular order. I'm going to the list tab and in the list tab I'm going to create a view. Now we've got a range of different formats here. Uh, standard view is what I'm going to work with but just to very quickly touch on a couple of the others uh, we've got a calendar view uh, so that we can uh, make our view in the form of a calendar. What you need for this is one of the columns must be a date so that the calendar can use that date to locate the particular data item, the particular record in the calendar view. The data sheet view is a very good one for maintenance. A uh, Gantt chart view is if you've got two dates, one that can be nominated as a start date, the other one as a finish date. So for example, uh, we have a sale date in this particular data set. If I had a delivery date, then we could put that in a Gantt view and see the Gantt bars for showing the start and delivery uh, of each item. And we can also tie into SharePoint Designer which gives us some nice extra functionality. Now also what we have here is the ability to start from an existing view where you take one that you already have and modify it. Let's create a view based on the standard view and I'm going to call this view, this is uh, Matthew's Sales is my view. This is going to be a public view, which means uh, anybody can see it. That's got the necessary permissions to be here in the first place, of course. Now, I'm just choosing the columns that I want to show. I notice I've switched off attachments. I've switched off special requirements. I've switched off uh, payment method. I just want to see that information that's left showing. Uh, now. I want to sort this in a particular order. So I'd like to sort this by product category <clears throat> so that they're in product category order first. And then within product category, I'd like to sort them by transaction date, which is our purchase date in ascending order. So you've got two possible sort orders there. Now, filtering. We want to filter this so that we're just seeing the sales for a particular salesperson where that is equal to and it's going to be equal to Dan Matthews who's our salesperson. Now we could filter by some other factor so I could be saying show me where it's Dan Matthews and they've been delivered. Okay, or where it's Dan Matthews and it's televisions. So you can set up multiple filters. You'll notice a little link here to show more columns if, uh, in fact, I wanted to filter by multiple factors. Now that's all I want to do in this view for the moment. Let's go. Okay. So we now see just the columns that we requested for just the salesperson we, requ we, we requested. We're noticing the default they're in batches of 30. Uh, so what we might do here is let's pop back into list. This time I'm going to modify the current view. 
I'm happy with everything that's there, uh, but, 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 I'm going to come down to style and set this to shaded style so that uh, we get a little bit of ultimate row shading. And in the item limit, uh, I might say, look, uh, I'd like to see 25 records per batch, uh, but you can vary that number to suit. And let's go OK. So I now have my view in batches of uh, 25 and I can flick backwards and forwards. Now you'll notice they're grouped by product category and within product category they're in alphabetical order. So what we've done there is we've made our first view showing just the sales for Dan Matthews and uh, ordered in the required order with just the required columns showing. And we've added some nice formatting uh, just to stazz it up a little bit. Now, a brief word from our sponsor. Don't forget, we'll be back with another view and exporting our data to Excel after the commercial. So make sure to come back. See you soon. And welcome back. In the second segment, we're going to look at creating a view that groups our records and takes our, our records, our list items, and totals uh, columns with numerical values so we can count and sum and so on. There are a couple of, there's a limitation with this that we'll see when we get to it, but uh, still very, very useful. So uh, our first step here is I'm going up to my breadcrumbs and I'm using my breadcrumbs and I can change the view. So I'm just back to all items. Not strictly necessary, but I thought, well, we'll have a look at that while we're here. Now, in the ribbon, I'm going to the list tab. I'm going to create a new view. This view is going to be based on our standard view. And this is our uh, order summary by category. Now, again, this is going to be a public view. I only want to show certain uh, certain columns, so there's things we don't really need to see. So I switched off a few columns there. Now, I can sort. Now, the sorting is separate to the grouping. So I'm going to sort by salesperson. And then I'm going to come down here to group by. Now in the group by, I want to group by product category. Now you can actually group within a group by an additional level, uh, but we'll just go the one level with this. We don't really have enough data, uh, but you could group by delivery status perhaps within product category. Now I'm going to start off with my groups collapsed. Uh, I have seen a suggestion, and it's not a bad suggestion, that with less skilled end users, you start off with the groups expanded so that people can get an idea of how it actually works. Uh, but I'll start with collapsed. Where collapsed is handy is if you've got a lot of data, you can collapse the groupings. It allows you to see a lot of top level categories on one screen, and then you can expand. I'm also going to switch on my totals and what I might like to do is get a count of order quantity. Now I know in this particular set of data that's a bit meaningless but we'll just get it so you can see it does a count uh, and if I come down here to unit price I could get an average or I could get a sum. Now this is where we spot the weakness here and where ultimately we need to go to SharePoint Designer or to export to Excel is you'll notice our calculated field, uh, which was the order value, is not showing here. So a sum of unit price is a bit meaningless, uh, but I could get an average unit price, for example. So <clears throat> again, in style, I'll go alternate row shading and okay 
Now what this gives me is a view where I get my totals appearing here, my count and my average at the top. I can expand and when I expand a category by clicking on the little expand button, a little collapse in this case, plus or minus, I can see a count and an average here and I can see the relevant records for that particular category. I can collapse and study another category. So this is giving me the uh, some basic statistics, some basic management reporting. The weakness is the not seeing the calculated fields. Uh, in a later lesson I will get into SharePoint Designer and we'll have a look at how you might handle that through SharePoint Designer. But let me show you how you can get around that uh, because people will start to say, look, can we get this and can we get that? And some of what they're going to ask you for is either needing SharePoint Designer, which maybe you don't have access to, or would be better off done in Excel. So we've collected our data in our list in SharePoint. We're now going to export it to Excel. So I've clicked on the list tab. I'm clicking export to Excel and it's just warning me I must have a compatible application, which I do. And I'm going to open the query and this will open uh, Excel for me. And I'm going to enable the security warning because I know where the data is coming from. It's not a security threat in this particular case. And I now have my data in, uh, in Excel, in a table ready to do a pivot table. In fact, you'll notice up here, now this is uh, Excel 2013, but it's not hugely different if you're doing it in any of the earlier versions, uh, Excel 07 or Excel 2010. And if I click Summarize with Pivot Table, it then identifies the block of data, and I can now build a pivot table here. Now, I'm just going to adjust my Excel spreadsheet so that you can see what I've done there and I could get some reports happening so I've got transaction date and I might have product category and uh, order value which is my calculated field drop that in there a couple of quick bits of work here two or three clicks we should be able to group that and let's get it by months and by years and if I go into my value field settings into my number formats we could get, get that into some currency formats and we've now got a brilliant little pivot table just summarizing all that data so by doing that or indeed by having a custom list we get the advantages of SharePoint where people can easily do multiple uh, we easily have multiple users doing our data entry we can control who's got the ability to do data entry by using our permissions uh, we can customize the list to collect whatever information we need we can have drop-down lists we can have things being required People can accumulate the data, they can add to it very, very easily, and then when we need to do our reporting, we've got some custom views that we can use, or we can just dump it into Excel and do our reporting through a pivot table in Excel. So I'm hoping you found that useful. Thank you very much for your time. In a future lesson, we will have a look at going a bit further out of the box and doing some views using SharePoint Designer. But what we've seen here today, you just you can do straight using all the standard features. I'm also working here from SharePoint Online, and this is the most basic level of SharePoint Online that I've got, and we've got all these key features are available. So please forward any questions to Stephen, S-T-V-E-N, at train a scope, T-R-A-I-N-A scope, S-C-O-P-E dot com. Thank you for your time.